Let's now determine how long it takes for a reaction to re-establish equilibrium after a shift in temperature. First, we will define some terms. Continuing to work with the reaction where A is in equilibrium with B, and the rate constant for the forward direction is Kf, and the rate constant for the reverse direction is Kr. Before the temperature shift, the net rate of change of the concentration of A is given by Kr initial times the concentration of B minus Kf initial times the concentration of A where we're denoting the rate constants before the temperature shift with the INI subscript. And when the system achieves equilibrium before any change in temperature, we can write Kr initial times the concentration of B at equilibrium in this initial frame being equal to Kf initial times the concentration of A at equilibrium in this initial frame, where now the concentration of A and B have the INI subscript to denote that no temperature change has been applied. Finally, after the temperature shifts, we drop the INI subscript to express the modified rate constants in equilibrium concentrations, such that we now have an expression that ex is expressed as Kf being equal to the concentration of A at equilibrium is equal to Kr times the concentration of B at equilibrium. So now that we've defined all these different um, positions for equilibrium, at least for the concentration of A and the concentration of B, we're now going to answer a pretty fundamental question about kinetics, which is if we have some sort of equilibrium shift, how long does it take for the system to reestablish equilibrium? The problem we solved where we had this previously established equilibrium where we had at equilibrium our concentration of A was 3 and our concentration of B was equal to 2A naught over 3 and that in this example what we're going to have happen is that the temperature is going to suddenly shift and so now it's going to shift in such a way that our equilibrium constant will now be equal 1 meaning that this new equilibrium constant because of the temperature shift will change so that whatever number it was before is becoming one. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate how much time it takes to reestablish equilibrium. And the quantification of this time is going to be centered in this time constant tau. And that what we'll also dis discover is what is the new equilibrium concentrations of the two species, which is something we already know how to do, but we're going to do it now in the context of kinetics um, and also in conjunction with finding out what is this time constant, which I'll introduce a little bit later, meaning how long will it take for this equilibrium to be reestablished. So again, our goal in this case is to basically determine how long to find out what is the concentration of A at equilibrium, so this is the concentration of A at the new equilibrium, and the concentration of B at the new equilibrium. And so before we get into that, let's again write down what our starting parameters are. So to start, and this is before the temperature change occurs, we had our concentration of A being equal to the concentration of A at the initial equilibrium. So this is where I've got EQ, I, and I. And as the problem states, that's at A0 over 3. My concentration of B, that's equal to this concentration of B equilibrium at the initial frame. So before the temperature change, and this was again the 2 A0 over 3. And so in the previous problem, we also had um, our values of our rate constants, where we saw that our forward rate constant was equal to 2 times the reverse rate constant. And if I wanted to know what is my equilibrium constant in this initial frame, well, that's just the concentration of the, the products. In this case, it's my concentration of B at this initial equilibrium divided by the concentration of A, the reactants, at this initial equilibrium. And so if I were to continue to write that out, the concentration of B at the equilibrium was 2 A0 over 3 divided by the concentration of A0 at this initial equilibrium. So then I can write that as 3 over the concentration of A0. And so then I can start to cross off various terms. And so what I get is my value of k, my equilibrium constant, being equal to 2. And so what we find is that at this new equilibrium, the k is changed such that after the temperature shift occurs, then our equilibrium constant is now equal to 1. And so what that means is that for my equilibrium constant to go from 2 to 1, that must mean that my concentration of A is then going to go up, and my concentration of B is going to go down in order to reestablish equilibrium. And now if I write my rate law expression, I'm going to write the concentration of A, or the change in concentration A with as a function of time, is equal to the reverse rate constant times the concentration of B 
minus the forward rate constant times the concentration of A. And again, this is the expression that still governs how my concentration of A and B change. However, I want to simplify this expression because, again, I start with a certain equilibrium, that's what I have here, and then I'm doing a change, which then changes my equilibrium constant such that I now realize that my concentration of A is going to go up and my concentration of B is going to go down. And so I want to look at my rate law expression and I want to turn this into an expression that only has one variable so that then I can actually do this integral and be able to see how both A and B shift at the same time. And that's because my reaction is A is in equilibrium with B. So basically A turns into B or B turns into A and that's my shift in equilibrium. So I'm going to use this trick again, this progress of the reaction, where I'm going to write down that my concentration of A is equal to the concentration of A at the new equilibrium. And for this, I'm going to subtract this progress value, which I'm going to denote as x. And I'm going to say my concentration of B is equal to the concentration of B at the new equilibrium plus x. And again, x is basically this term that is this progress of the reaction. It's going to be, the way that this progress is going to be measured, though, is that it's going to be backwards from what probably what intuitively what might you might have thought before, where in this case, I'm going to have some value x naught being some number. And that's going to be at t is equal to 0, where at t is equal to 0 is when the temperature suddenly changes. And then as t increases, so as t goes to infinity, my x naught, or my x rather, my progress, is going to go to 0. Meaning that as these values change, so as x goes to 0 in both these terms, then my concentration of A will then become my equilibrium my new equilibrium concentration, and my concentration of B will become my new equilibrium concentration. The reason why I wrote minus sign here for the A part and plus sign for the B part is that if x naught is some finite value, and it essentially represents how far away each of these components are from the new equilibrium, well, since I know that I'm going to be increasing A, then that means that if when x is x naught, then I've subtracted amount from the new equilibrium, and that's where I'm sitting at at some time t, which means that as the progress, as the system, or as time increases, as the reaction progresses, and we reestablish equilibrium, then my concentration of A will rise as my x term gets smaller. And the same thing can be said for the B. In essence, the picture that this is trying to plot is one that looks like this, where if I have my time here on my x-axis and I have my concentrations on my y-axis, again, b is something that's going to be up here. My a is something that's down here that we found before because my concentration of a at equilibrium was less than my concentration of b. It's this two-thirds, one-third values that I have over here. Suddenly, and this is at this spot where I'm going to say at t is equal to zero because that's where we're going to say that our um, our shift happened in our equilibrium. And as we saw down here when we said our k nu is equal to 1, which means our a goes up and our b goes down, then we have our new equilibriums that form. So there's my b going down, and here is my a going up. And they both move up and down at a certain amount, and that amount that they move up and down, this is my x naught. And so this is where these values then are where these expressions come from is that here I've got B equilibrium with the concentration of B at the new equilibrium and here is where I've got the concentration of A at the new equilibrium and that at T is equal to zero for the B equilibrium I'm going to be adding X which means that to get back to the original case that's how I'm going to get to the original amount I had before at T is equal to zero and the converse happens here I have to subtract from the A equilibrium by x naught to get back to the original a. And that the progress of the reaction is basically watching the decay of x naught um, go to zero as the time increases.